What is going on and welcome back to the channel. Ooh, you know I'm excited to be here. I hope you're excited to be here also. But today I wanted to do something that is a, a little bit different, kind of kind of like a how it works kind of video, I guess maybe you'd call it. I don't know. Since I have the BRZ completely torn apart and we have the transmission and the all of the drive components out of the car, I figured this would be a great time to show you guys how they all work together. Maybe you know how a transmission and a clutch work together. Maybe you don't. Maybe you know how to drive a manual transmission car and you just don't know how all the components function together. So I want to talk about it. I want to break it down today. I want to talk about what happens when you push in that clutch pedal, go over all of the pieces I have laying around the garage with you. So that way you know what the components are, what they do and how they work together. So. Let's lay out everything in front of us. We'll start going over it all. We'll cover the names, we'll say the function, and then we'll see how they all communicate together. So these are all of the major aspects that cover the driveline system. The transmission itself, obviously, the shifter carrier or shifter assembly, the short shifter itself, the pressure plate, the throw out bearing, the clutch, the flywheel, and the driveline. Now all of these components work together in a way to be able to allow you to shift the car, be able to start it by engaging, disengaging the clutch. Now the way that you're going to disengage and engage a clutch, hold up. Now the way you're going to engage and disengage a clutch is based off of three components mainly, which is going to be the clutch, the, well, I guess four, the clutch, the pressure plate, the flywheel, the throw out bearing, well, I guess five and the clutch fork. So when you hit your clutch pedal, you have a slave cylinder in the car that is connected to your master brake cylinder. When you push that pedal in, it actuates the slave cylinder, which then hits this clutch fork. So the clutch fork has two small indentations on it, one of which sits inside the transmission, the other one sits atop of it, and that is, well, you can see it right there. On the very top of this clutch fork here is where the actuator of the slave cylinder pivots off of this. So when the clutch fork is assembled, it only moves left and right or back and forth, depending on how you're looking at it. Now, when you hit that clutch fork, it releases this throw out bearing and we'll throw all of this on the transmission so that way you guys can see how this actually works. But just to give you a prerequisite kind of informational aspect, the clutch fork and the throw out bearing sit together. So that way, when you actuate it, it moves this throw out bearing. Now the throw out bearing has a very important job. You see the throw out bearing is what sits on the pressure plate itself. So if you can see, you can kind of see where my old one is worn right in that center disc area where the old throw out bearing sat. Now this is a diaphragm based spring on your pressure plate. Pretty much all pressure plates are gonna run a diaphragm based spring. The, the, the whole reason why it's diaphragm is all the springs are pushed outwards away from the clutch assembly. But when you push that throw out bearing against this, it then puts pressure on that all all these springs going around this pushes the springs inward which then disengages the clutch from the flywheel now when it comes to the clutch your clutch is the only component that's not actually bolted up to anything your clutch will sit on the input shaft of your transmission and kind of float there this is why you need a clutch alignment tool mainly when installing your transmission otherwise this thing's gonna just it's gonna float all over the place and nobody wants that. Now, before we go too much farther, I do wanna take a second and talk about clutches. So whenever it comes to clutches, there's a lot of different varieties you can get out there on the market. This is an OEM BRZ clutch. Exidy manufactures this clutch. It's a full face, which means there's no pucks or cutouts in this clutch. Now, the reason that you're gonna have a pucked clutch is because each one of those pads on a pucked clutch, I don't actually have one to show, but I have a pretty close representation. This is a, Competition clutch, as you can see, there's only certain areas that have friction pads. So the friction pads are generally either gonna be made up of like a carbon ceramic material or an, or an organic base. The reason that these are there is they're just high friction materials, which is what you want in a clutch. So when your clutch starts slipping over time, it essentially means that all of the material around the clutch, it's just starting to fade off. Oh, sorry, this flywheel's really heavy. So when your flywheel, which is this component here, has a pilot bearing, it sits on the input shaft of the transmission. When your flywheel and your clutch don't like to talk to each other, your clutch will be sitting on that and your clutch will spin against the flywheel, which you don't want. 
because the flywheel itself is always bolted up. This bolts up to the crankshaft of the engine. So whenever your car is spinning, whenever the engine is on, this is spinning with it. This is very heavy, I'm gonna set this down. Now the flywheel does have a very important job. That is what is going to make your clutch spin or not spin because this is what is going to push up against it based off of the uh, pressure plate itself because you have the same material on the back side of the pressure plate where the clutch will very nicely inlay on there. Now all of this works because of that throw out bearing and that clutch fork and you of course, because since you're sitting in the car, you're gonna be the one actuating that clutch pedal that's gonna be making the change in the transmission. But we kind of talked about a lot of stuff here. I mean, the last couple things, obviously you have a shifter assembly where your shifter itself will actually sit inside of the shifter assembly and allow you to change the gears. I'm not gonna go too much into gearing ratios of transmissions today because that's a whole nother topic, but essentially your transmission has two shafts. It has an input shaft and a counter shaft, which kind of actuates which gear you're gonna be putting the car into. And then that's where you get into gear ratios, teeth sizing, gear sizing, a lot of stuff going on there, but if you guys want that one, I can definitely make that a video at a later point. But today, we're just talking about driveline stuff. Let's hop over to the actual transmission that I have pulled out of the car, mock all of this stuff up on it, and I'll show you how it all works. So this is the transmission I'm gonna be showing you guys this on. This is a 2013 Subaru BRZ transmission. Now, whenever it comes to having your transmission, you're gonna have to have a hole for your clutch fork to sit through. So up here in the very top of the transmission, you can see my hand kind of just popping through there. That's where your clutch fork is going to come into play. Generally, it's going to slide up from the inside and then sit on this pivot ball and clamp in. I have the clamp off of this. So I have it on my new clutch fork already. But the clutch fork is going to be resting on this throw out bearing. So the throw out bearing itself will sit onto this shaft of the transmission, if I can get this thing to cooperate with me here. So it'll sit on your transmission like so. The clutch fork will be attached to the throw out bearing with two retaining clips. So that way, every time you go to move the clutch fork, the throw out bearing moves with it. I mean, I could throw some grease on here to make this a little bit easier on myself, but what fun would that be? So whenever you are hitting that slave cylinder, which is generally bolted to the top of the transmission, it's pushing that actuating arm on the top of the clutch fork, which then moves the throw out bearing back and forth. Kind of like so. Now, when that throw out bearing is moved, you're gonna have a pressure plate sitting in front of it. So that pressure plate will rest up against that throw out bearing. So with that pressure plate there, whenever that throw out bearing is engaged, it moves all of these springs going around here to disengage the clutch from the transmission. That's why whenever you're sitting at a red light, you go to push in the clutch, your flywheel is spinning. However, your clutch is not engaged because you have that throw out bearing pushed against all of these springs going around the outside of the pressure plate. Now we're gonna remove the pressure plate from this equation here for a minute. And this is where things get a little fun. So when it comes to your clutch itself, as you can see here, we're still using the OEM Exidy clutch from the BRZ. You're gonna see these springs going around the inside of the clutch as well. These are here for a very specific reason. Now what these springs do is they help absorb some of the rotational mass from the torque coming from the engine. So when it is actually on these splines of the transmission, if I can get this guy to line up here. Come on, man, come on, you're making me look like a fool. There we go. So when the clutch is actually on the splines of the input shaft on the transmission, when it sees rotational mass, this will spin very hard from the torque coming from the engine. I mean, assuming you're making a decent amount of power. Now what these springs do is they compress a little bit to help absorb some of that energy so that way it makes for a smoother ride when you're driving. So, fun stuff, right? If you didn't know what the springs are there for, now you do. Now what is this clutch actually grabbing onto. So with the clutch mounted on here, you will see this small shaft on the very end of the input shaft with no splines. It's just a small rounded area. That's gonna be for your pilot bearing on your flywheel. Now we talked about the flywheel a little bit. This thing is extremely heavy. This is your flywheel. This is an OEM Subaru flywheel, but you'll see right in the middle of it, there is a small bearing. It looks like it goes to a skateboard wheel, like a Swiss bone red or something like that. They spin forever. Who does, I should put a bone red bearing in a flywheel and see what happens. But this is what mounts up to the actual crankshaft. As you can see, all those bolts in the middle, that's what bolts up. And then that small bearing on the center will sit on the input shaft of the transmission, if I can find the hole, like so. So your flywheel itself is always spinning. Whenever your engine is spinning, your flywheel is spinning with it because it's bolted up directly to that. Now we don't have the pressure plate in here right now, but we do have the throw out bearing and the clutch fork on here. So every time you do this, watch, watch what happens. Well, nothing, there we go. You can hear the clutch grabbing onto that flywheel. 
Now, with the pressure plate there, it's gonna do the opposite. It's gonna disengage that clutch from the flywheel because of those springs on here. But you can hear it grabbing onto there. That's just me doing it. That's not actually how it works, but I just wanted to give a representation to the sounds. Now, when your clutch starts to slip, you're running out of that friction material. And then when you start to run out of that material going around the outside of the clutch, then your flywheel spinning against your clutch, they're not grabbing onto it. So that's generally uh, going to be one of your major issues when your clutch starts to slip, which that's not a fun issue to do. Now, as a side note, when you are working inside of your transmission like this, something that is good to do is to replace any of these any of these components that can be with either strong ones or OEM replacement parts. Inside of the transmission, you'll see this shaft that the throw out bearing sits on and you can see some scarring on it a little bit from this old throw out bearing that we had on there. Now, if you take your finger, you can run it across there. You can feel divots in the material that used to be there. A good idea is to replace that retainer if they do make a replacement one. I know some cars don't have a replacement retainer for this shaft. It's also a good idea to swap out this pivot ball uh, if they do make a stronger one out there. A lot of common issues on the BRZs, FRSs, and a couple other uh, Subarus that I've seen out there is on this clutch fork, this pivot ball point will crack and that pivot ball will explode out the other side of this clutch fork, which uh, nobody wants to deal with. That's not a fun problem. So to recap here, clutch fork sits on the pivot ball and hangs out over the retainer shaft. The actual throw up bearing then sits on that retainer shaft as so. We have the pressure plate that goes against that throw out bearing, which then compresses these springs, which releases our clutch. Am I gonna be able to get all this on here? That'd be kind of cool if I did. But then on the other side of that clutch, like we talked about, is where you have your flywheel, which kind of just hangs out here. And I don't think I have enough shaft on there to get this guy on there. I do not, but in essence, that's what's happening. Actually, hold up, let me bolt all these together. So this is a cool little thing to show you guys also just to get all this on here. So your flywheel will house your clutch assembly like so. And then your pressure plate bolts onto that. So I just kind of have this mocked up a little bit, but this is the stack of what it looks like. So you've got the pressure plate with the clutch inside of it bolted to the flywheel. And then all of that will just slide right on here. If I can get it to slide on, there we go like so. So now this way, whenever I can't compress that spring with my hand, I don't have any, I don't have any upper body strength to do so. So that's kind of how it all works together. You press in the clutch, it hits this clutch fork, which then pushes on that throw out bearing, depressing those diaphragm springs, releasing the clutch from the flywheel. When it's engaged, obviously you, you're not pushing on anything, but the clutch is pushed up against the flywheel and spinning with it, which in turn spins the input shaft and the counter shafts inside of the transmission, which then sends power to your drive line, to your rear differential, and that's how you get all those awesome chooching noises and make all the power. So, it's a very heavy assembly also. Clutches, they're fun to deal with. Not the most fun to change out though. But in essence, that is how this entire assembly works. It's a very easy mechanical motion that I should not have done that. This thing is heavier than I thought. It's a very simple mechanical motion that is just, it's easy to understand once you actually see it. I know there's a lot of people out there who tried explaining it in person to you and without being able to like see how the movements happen, it can be a little confusing. Now, if you are looking to upgrade a clutch out there, there are a lot of different options. You can get pressure plates with different pressure ratings and OEM, which is essentially just a stronger diaphragm spring on the pressure plate. You can also get clutches rated for different wheel horse or different torque values because clutches are measured in torque because that's what the engine puts out. Now, like I said, if you have a clutch similar to this one that is not a full face clutch with material going all the way around it, all of those pads are gonna be rated to different torque ratings. You can have six puck clutches, four, four puck, three puck. There's a lot of different ones out there. This starts to get a little weird though. And all of those clutches and pressure plates will be rated towards different values. So if you are looking at upgrading your clutch or your pressure plate, or even your flywheel, lightweight flywheel will make a huge difference on the car. But I mean, it also depends on what you want out of it. Swapping over to a lightweight flywheel will make the RPM of the car drop faster than a heavier stock flywheel would, which would make for a little bit annoying driving in traffic. But you need to take that into effect when considering what you want to get for your car. 
that's all I got for you guys. I just wanted to cover the basics of how a clutch actually works with a transmission. Uh, the gear ratio stuff I didn't want to go into today. We just don't have time for that all in one video. I do hope that this helped you understand a little bit more how clutches actually work inside of your car. Because we all know how to drive them. Well, I hope, I mean, if you don't know how to drive it, you should learn because it's pretty cool. It's fun, it's fun driving a manual transmission car. You get a lot more control out of it. But that's all I got for you guys. I hope you liked the video. If you did, feel free to smash that like button. You know what to do. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, which you greatly, you should be, because your boy appreciates it, and it helps make more content like this. So, I mean, we can keep this going. We got the BRZ built, ooh. I forgot that's in there. We got the BRZ build going also. So, I mean, it's a pretty good reason to subscribe. We're throwing a turbo in this car. Who doesn't want to watch that? And with that, though, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies. Woo!